So today I'm going to tell you a story, I'm going to give you some amazing facts, and I'm going to tell you why you should advocate with me. So once, there was a little girl who loved Life Cereal. She could eat the entire box in one day if she wanted, and it was her favorite thing in the whole wide world. Now this little girl, she also loved buttered noodles. They were her comfort food, she could eat them at every meal, they were her absolute favorites. She also loved uh, pizza and sandwiches and pancakes, chocolate chip pancakes, all sorts of things. So this little girl loved these good, carby, comfort foods. But this little girl also found that these foods did not love her back. Anytime that she would eat one of these foods, she would be sent to the bathroom for hours, running back and forth, and it was awful. This little girl has since found out that she was diagnosed with celiac disease, which means that she is allergic to and cannot ingest gluten. Now, this little girl is me. I have now learned that I have celiac disease, which is super sad speaking these are my favorite foods. But celiac disease affects approximately 1% of the population. And it's a severe autoimmune disorder that means you cannot ingest gluten. And so the only way to treat your symptoms is to eat a gluten-free diet. Now that I have celiac, when I go out to eat at a restaurant, I have to pay 50 cents to $2 more for my gluten-free options just because I can't eat gluten. Gluten-free food, on average, costs two to three times more expensive than their gluten-filled counterparts. Now, I think that there should be price cap regulations for gluten-free foods so that way they can cost similar amounts. So first off, what even is celiac disease? It is a common autoimmune disorder that's permanent, and it is an allergy to wheat. So gluten has wheat in it. And so foods like flours, um, barley, oats, breads, anything like that you can't eat. According to the Celiac Disease Center, the only way to prevent symptoms such as diarrhea, osteoporosis, anemia, malnutrition, or many other symptoms is to avoid eating gluten. And according to Beyond Celiac, they say that one in 133 Americans have celiac disease, which is approximately 1% of the population, and it's incurable, except to eat gluten-free, is the only way to treat your symptoms. Now, I have celiac, and it's been a long and painful process trying to figure out what in the world is wrong. And according to Beyond Celiac, they say it takes on average six to 10 years to get an accurate celiac diagnosis. Now, a gluten-free diet is the only way to treat your symptoms, which is incredibly challenging because gluten's in so many foods, especially those good old comfort foods, that most people love, but it's also hidden in other foods, such as spice packets, um, gravy, medication, and just other common beauty products. But if you have celiac, eating gluten-free is critical for your overall health and well-being. You can also have a gluten sensitivity where you cannot eat gluten because you just don't feel good or a perceived sense of healthiness that it might offer. But according to the Journal of Nutrition and Metabolism, that's only beneficial to eat gluten-free if you have celiac, because otherwise you're losing out on really important dietary fibers and other important vitamins. But if you have celiac disease, that's what's necessary for you. Now the downside to this is that a gluten-free diet is way more expensive and it's your only option. It creates an unnecessary financial burden and strain on people with celiac disease. A study in Australia done where they compared different families and their level of income to whether they could afford gluten-free foods. So by the Ta Dietitians Association of Australia, they found that most families couldn't even afford a gluten-free lifestyle, especially those who were on welfare or from single parent families. So, a gluten-free diet is critical to your overall health and well-being if you have celiac disease. But you have to pay anywhere from 50 cents to $2 more anytime you go out to a restaurant just to eat food that is available for you. So anything like a gluten-free bun, gluten-free pizza, gluten-free pasta, it costs extra at a restaurant just to get gluten-free. And I have no control over the fact that I need this. It also really impacts your grocery bill. So for example, at our local Kroger, here are some of the different price discrepancies that I have dealt with. I loved saltine crackers. And for a 16 ounce box of regular saltine crackers, at our grocery store, it's $2.50. But for a 10 ounce box of gluten-free saltine crackers, it's $7.99. So $7.99 
versus $2.50 is a big difference. There's also Kraft Mac and Cheese. For a seven ounce box of Kraft Mac and Cheese, it's $1. Whereas a six ounce box of gluten-free Kraft Mac and Cheese is $2.50. $2.50 versus $1. A third example is Nestle Slice and Bake Cookies. For a 16 ounce bag of Nestle Slice and Bake, it's $2.50. Whereas a gluten-free variety that's similar in a 12 ounce container is $4.99. So $4.99 to $2.50. Those are all a big difference. I believe that gluten-free foods should have a price cap regulation just like any other staple foods at grocery stores have, like eggs or milk or anything like that. I think that there should be a regulation for price capping these because in all of those examples, you have to pay 60 to 70% more for gluten-free varieties of food. And in every single one of those examples, you're actually getting less food. I think that there should not, you should not be able to discriminate against those with a diagnosed medical condition. I can't control that I have to eat foods that are gluten-free to make me happy. But I think that specifically at grocery stores and restaurants, there should be price cap regulations on these foods so that way they're available for everybody. Companies know that they have specific target markets who are gluten-free. And so they know when they have foods like these that we don't have any other options. They know that I'm gonna pay for gluten-free foods even if it's more expensive and I can afford it. But some people can't afford a gluten-free lifestyle even if, even if it's what they need. So celiac disease affects three million Americans. You might have celiac, you might know someone who has celiac, this might be the first time you've ever even heard of celiac, but it is a frustrating and painful disease. And I don't think that your financial status should affect whether you can eat foods that make you happy. You should not have to pay 60 to 70% extra to take care of yourself. So I have been blessed to be in a family that can afford to pay for gluten-free options, but I wanna advocate for little girls like me who can't afford that and who can't afford to eat the lifestyle that I have and a lifestyle that makes them happy. So I want to bring awareness to consumers and to lawmakers and ask grocery stores and restaurants to keep the pricing of gluten-free foods down and similar to those with their gluten filled. Thank you. Huzzah! <laughs>